Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are continuing our conversation with Keith Rapol. He is the author of a tremendous book called Just Breathe. All stories are redeemable. All brokenness is repairable. All addictions are breakable. Uh, yesterday, Keith shared part of his story about how he came from Memphis, Tennessee to California and uh, became uh, the la- largest producer on the West Coast of uh, pornography and Yet, God was pursuing him all along like he does all of us. But if you missed that program yesterday, I want to encourage you to go to our website, hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today and hear uh, the background of Keith's story. But the great news, Keith, is that God never gives up on us and he pursues us. And it's kind of interesting how uh, God used uh, something such as soft serve yogurt to catch you. Uh, Share with us about that story. Well, um, my wife, interesting enough, she loved yogurt. And we would go in the afternoons and go out and get a cup of yogurt. And, and she would, you know, tell me which yogurt stores were the best yogurt. She had a really uh, unique eye and taste for good product at a good store. And, and uh, you know, we had moved... We, we had bought a weekend home at the beach in Ventura, California, and uh, there was a little spot down here in the seaside community on the corner, uh, highly visible, um, and, and I thought it was, like, it was like 390 square feet, and I thought, you know, maybe I could rent that and open my wife her own yogurt store. It was like, you know, I felt that uh, I was in a different city and I could even maybe jumpstart a little business that I could live here and pretend I wasn't who I really was. Uh, You know, meanwhile, having this tremendous um, businesses over in in Santa Clarita and Chatsworth, California, and and I could just kind of hide out over here in this seaside community and, 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 and live a different life. Uh, so I rented the spot, and I, I um, proceeded down the road to open this yogurt store. I put, as any good business owner does, I printed a couple of big banners and hung them on the store saying, Coming soon, surfing yogurt. And, um, you know, letting the community know that there would be a great yogurt spot on the corner. And uh, I got a phone call one morning. Uh, about eight o'clock and and they said Keith you might want to come down to the corner and I'm like well what's wrong they said just come on down I got to the corner and the, there was big red lettering on the banner that said uh, porn stars wanted and our porn producer and on the front window in red red paint said porn stars wanted and uh, the shame the humility uh, I I wondered how many people had seen it, and I scraped off, I ripped down the banners and scraped the stuff off the windows, and uh, you know was ready to to give up. I remember coming back and telling my wife, I you know we've got to go, we need to sell this house, we need to leave this community, um, and she says, no, we're not running, uh, we're going to stay here, you're going to hold your head up, and we're going to move forward. So I put fencing around the building, I put cameras up, and I proceeded to move forward with opening this little yogurt store. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I thought, no one's going to come when I open. <laughs> you know, I'm going to spend all this money on a business that, you know, the secret was out, and who's going to come? You know, it's a, it's a family business, and, and the families obviously don't want me in the community. So I moved forward, and... It was the evening before the grand opening. Um, a car came in, and there was a man and his son and his little dog, and they walked up, and they said, Hey, are you guys open? And I said, Not tonight, but you can get a free cup of yogurt. But uh, there was something different about this man. He had this this glow in his eyes, and he, and he uh, exemplified happiness and and uh, kind of like a, like a movie star. I don't know. And uh, I gave him a cup of yogurt, and he went away. Uh, They said they had just moved here uh, before he left. They got bequeathed to church. 
and he had moved here to uh, take over a church. He was from Seattle. And so I knew that about the man, and he left. The next morning, we opened, and surprisingly enough, the whole community came out. And there was a line down the street, and it was the first time in my life that I had interacted with uh, my neighborhood. Uh, you know, I had school teachers and children and, and doctors and attorneys and, you know, firemen and policemen. And it was just amazing. It, it took off and, and, uh, and it just kept going day after day. Um, but there was still that something inside of me that was missing. And I didn't know, um, uh, you know, what it was. I always give this as an example. It'd be like if you're standing in a room of a thousand people but you felt alone. And that's how I would always feel. There was an emptiness inside of me. There was a, a hole in my soul. The, the wind blew through and through in it. Um, I was sitting on the bench in my yogurt shop, and that man that came here to open a church came in, and, and I just, something in me asked for help. I said, hey, do you think maybe one day we could grab a cup of coffee? And he goes, sure. And so we would meet in Starbucks, and I would proceed to tell him my life story. And, uh, you know, at the end, I said, well, there you have it. Do you still want to sit and talk with me? Do you still want to be my friend? And, and he goes, yes, Keith. He goes, but uh, can I pray for you? And I stood up, and I looked around. I was, you want to pray in Starbucks? No way. I can't be seen praying in public. And I think back today how ridiculous that sounds but when I, you know, could see, be seen in public for the man I was. Um, I said we would go sit in the car and, and we would pray there. And uh, he would ask that I would repeat after him a prayer. And at the end, he said, you just gave your life to Jesus. And uh, he, I didn't know exactly how I felt at that moment. I knew I had made a decision uh, to turn my life over to to Jesus. You know, I went on the, a faith-based decision, and he ta- said something that was really tangible to me in that moment. He says, God knew what he got when he got you. And that stuck with me because I, he accepted me for who I was at that moment. Not all the stuff that that, that I had been, he took me right in that moment. And I didn't know what to do with my life at that moment, but he gave me another solution. He said, Keith, as long as you keep your eyes on the cross, all that stuff behind you will fall away. You know, I was really good at getting in trouble, but I was really bad at getting out of trouble. And so that sounded like a pretty good solution, just keeping my eyes on the cross. Um he would ask me one more question before we would leave. He'd say, would you come to church on Sunday? And I said, I'll try. And I went home. I told my wife what had happened. and said I was going to church on Sunday. She was shocked. But yet she had seen me go through many phases. So she thought, this is just another phase. He'll, he'll pass through. Well, I would go to church on Sunday I remember pulling in that parking lot and opening my door and throwing my cigarette out on the church parking lot and stepping out with my left foot onto the cigarette butt. And there was a sea of those happy people at the door. This scared the, scared me to death. Like, how will I go toward those people and make it through that crowd? And then Jude came, Pastor Jude came out of that crowd and he's like, Keith, you made it. And uh, he goes, Come with me. I want to introduce you to somebody. And he brings me over to another man at the church, and he says, this is Mike. He used to sell marijuana. We call him Marijuana Mike. <laughs> oh, no. They're going to call me Porno Keith. And uh, it just petrified me. But uh, it never happened, unfortunately. I mean, uh, thank gosh. And um, I would go down, and I would sit on the front row of that church, and I uh, kind of camped out there every Sunday for six months. And that was the beginning of my my life turn and change. 
Well, I like in the book, uh, Keith, uh, your book uh, called Just Breathe, uh, talk with Keith Rapult. It's R-E-P-U-L-T. Uh, has a great book called Just Breathe. Talk about his journey of uh, growing up in a really challenging uh, childhood and uh, being highly successful in the uh, adult entertainment industry to how he found Jesus, which he's just been sharing. But you talked about, you know, like you said in the parking lot, how you were anxious about even entering the doors of the church. But when you got in there, it was a lot different than the church that you grew up or the churches that you went to. Uh, the service was totally different, wasn't it, as far as just the music and the message and all that stuff? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, uh, you know, the, the music was beautiful. Uh, people all, I mean, it was from young to old, and people seemed to be uh, very excited about their lives. And, and uh, it just, it was infectious, the, the atmosphere. And uh, I just felt inside, once again, like I said, that being lonely in the crowd of a thousand was not there. I was feeling for once in my life, a, a wholeness, a, a feeling of you being a part of and belonging, and that uh, that I was, you know, I, I, I'm finding out now, later, that that was the, the Holy Spirit inside of me. Um, I started to have new things, new, new experiences. I, rem- I remember one lady, she gave me a CD. It was a Christian CD, and I thought I had found... A, a new, the newest sound in the world. I was driving around in my car, listening to the CD over and over and over, and I, I would pull up to people and roll down my window and say, listen to this. You have to hear this music. And uh, I remember one day I, I pulled into uh, the mall, and, and I, I called Pastor Jude, and I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I feel this way inside. And he goes, that's the Holy Spirit working inside of you. And... Uh, uh, the new life that I had found was taking over on the old life. Well, I think it's just a, a great reminder to somebody that's listening, maybe just driving down the road and scanning the radio and came up on this, that, you know, maybe you grew up in church as a child and you just felt like, or even as a young adult, but it just didn't really connect with you and didn't relate to your life. I want to encourage you, like Keith, to go and, you know, try a church again. There's plenty of churches and uh, the message is not changed about God and his son Jesus and his grace and mercy and redemption but uh, a lot a lot of churches have been a lot more uh, adaptable to our culture and make it where people can relate more in the Bible. Uh, some tremendous Bible teachers out there. The music is just amazing at so many churches. So I think maybe somebody that's listening today, as you've heard Keith share uh, going in, even though he still had a lot of challenges in his life, uh, was afraid the doors, the walls might crash in on the church. It obviously did in his life. Uh, maybe you're hearing that same lie today, and I want to encourage you to maybe check out, uh, you know, go check out church again. Um, We'd be glad to help you here at Hope is Here. If you need some help finding a church here in central Kentucky, you can go to our website, hopeishere.today, and we'll be glad to help you with that. But uh, we're, we're going to have Keith share over the next couple of programs how he got sober. Um, he has a great acronym that he uses the word breathe. Uh, I think it'll really help uh, maybe some people that are struggling with addiction and in different areas of their life. So I hope that you will tune in tomorrow and join us for that. Maybe let a friend know about it uh, but we're going to continue our conversation with keith Rapol. Uh, he's the author of a wonderful book called just breathe all stories are redeemable all brokenness is repairable and all d- addictions are breakable join us again tomorrow as we'll continue our conversation with keith Rapol on hope is here need help with what to get mom for mother's day let creations by karen help you make mom feel special with a beautiful arrangement of flowers or a plant creations by karen is locally owned for over 20 years and also offers candy balloons and other creative options to let mom know she is loved place your order for mother's day today at creationsbykaren.net that's creations with a k by karen.net or call them at 859-277-6166 that's 859-277-6166 Sixty-one, sixty-six.